Hey everyone, coming up we have our dining review of Mythos at Islands of Adventure. It's going to be a doozy, for sure. Live from the Bob Varley studio, this is the Universal Edition of the Diz Unplugged. This is... The Diz Unplugged Universal Edition, episode 69, dude. <laughs> the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. Let the experts at Dreams Unlimited Travel help you plan the perfect universal vacation. You can visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Hey everyone, welcome to our first Universal Edition podcast of the year. The year 2016, just in case anyone is confused about what year that actually is. I am your host, your ghost host with the most, Craig Williams. And today I am joined with, well, I'm not joined with. By. That sounds joined by. We're going to go with by. I'm joined, I still don't like it. Also here in the studio <laughs> is Jenny Lynn Knopf. Hey, everyone. And then back on the controls... Still aching to get his way up to this table. Our yeah. associate producer, number one in our eyes, number two in our hearts, number three on the call sheet, <laughs> Rhino Clavin. All right. Hello. Oh. Mike, not quiet. on? No, it, no, it's on. It's on? Just quiet? I was yelling about spaghetti, so I think I turned it down too you far. You were yelling about spaghetti right before we started. Just so everyone knows out there, Rhino believes that spaghetti is the Don't food say that. of the poor. No, um, it's because when I was a kid and we were poor and all my mother could make was all this stuff, I had the same meals repeatedly, and one of the ones she made terribly was spaghetti. And like, how do you mess up spaghetti? Well... She set fire to our kitchen several times, and uh, so I always say it reminds me of when I was poor. Not, it's the food of being poor. 2016 is the year of spaghetti. Sesame cake is no. of another time. Sesame cake will always be in our hearts. Yes. <laughs> but if you have a problem with Rhino thinking that spaghetti is the food for the <laughs> poor, write to him, food. rhino at wdwinfo.com. In our house, there was taco salad. I, I would have killed for taco yeah, salad. That's, well, by taco salad, I mean iceberg lettuce, red kidney beans, Catalina dressing, and Doritos. Mm. Yeah, that's I, just scoop that right on into the Dorito bag. You got yourself a walking taco. Yeah. For anyone concerned out there, uh, the food we're already talking about may or may not be better than Mythos, what we're actually going to be <laughs> talking just about say, on the show. No uh, one knows what this podcast is up, actually about. Um, <laughs> Yeah, for anyone tuning in for their first time ever, you're you're probably really confused of what this podcast is about. I know it's we're says, still a little confused ourselves sometimes. I think yeah, it's supposed to be a universal podcast, but most of the time it's just about uh, random assortment of topics that Rhinos. pop into our head. <laughs> what did you just call me? I didn't say your name at all. I said a random, random. assortment of topics that pop into our head. Oh, I thought you said pompadour head, and I. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him jump to the defensive like that. What's a pompadour head? Uh, You're uh, looking at one. A pompadour is when the hair, the, so I thought you were making fun of my hair. Oh, I do that behind your back, <laughs> not in front of your face. Uh, and no, we, uh, last night we went and dined at Mythos and uh, it was an interesting experience and uh, we are going to jump uh, fully into that. But not just yet. Yeah, not not quite yet, um, because there's been a lot of stuff that's actually happened uh, before that um, this week. Well, he actually, yeah, this week and a little bit before. Uh, one thing, I don't really want to go in depth on it, because there's not really a lot that can be said, except for uh, hope the person gets well soon. But uh, over the holiday break and hiatus, and I believe it was actually on January 1st here, uh, unfortunately, a, a third party team member, a caricature artist at uh, Islands of Adventure in the Toon Lagoon area was uh, stabbed in the head by a disgruntled ex-employee and... Yikes. Um, yeah, I, the employee, of course, was arrested yeah. and 
the the victim is, I believe, last time I checked, still in critical condition in a coma in the hospital. Okay, so. now for those of us who are wondering how this came about when we now have metal detectors everywhere in the parks, can you explain that? No. Okay. I, I thought he just stabbed him with, with his caricature scissors? stuff. Yeah, I... I like his tools. I don't think he brought Work tools. I, 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 I want to say I did read one place that the... He used scissors, the person, right? Yeah, the, the person who did the stabbing. I want to say I read one place that he tried to bring scissors in through metal detectors, but they stopped him with it, and then he still managed to find... A pair somewhere. A, a inside, pair of scissors getting, is not that car- hard to find. Do like caricature if, artists regularly carry scissors? I'm not a caricature artist, so I can't really speak on what type of supplies they would have. But I could see arts and crafts needing scissors. Yeah. I could also see them just walking through the break room area and pulling them off yeah. the deck. Like at Disney, I could have grabbed a pair of scissors anywhere. They're and everywhere. Let's be honest. At a place like Disney, Universal, or probably any workplace. Uh, even if you were fired, especially recently, there's a good chance that not everyone would know. And you could probably just walk in the back and act like nothing's going on yeah. and do something like that. So our best thoughts and wishes go out with the victim as he's making his recovery. Yeah. And uh, But on to happier news with it. Um, the, the better of the two news, we're not doing a full buzz today just because there's there wasn't really that much that came out over the holidays. Um, while we've been gone, but just recently this week, the 2016 Mardi Gras information was actually released, and it's looking pretty promising. I'm very to say excited. The least. Sesame seed cake is soon going to be replaced by king cake. That's clever. Stop. Eat. I'll have to maybe get a new <laughs> accent for that one. Uh, stop eating my king cake. I can't do it yet. You have to That's do a New too- Orleans I'm in- accent. I'm embarrassed for myself right now. <laughs> I just got hot sweats. Oh. Fantastic. Oh, no, but That's Mardi why Gras. he's on that side of the table and we're over here. Exactly. Uh, Mardi Gras is coming up real quick. Uh, February 6th will be the first night of the oh, 2016 wow. version of Universal Orlando's Mardi Gras. And that this year, we know it will be running through April 16th. Of course, this is on select nights, either a Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Um, it's, it's, it's not a thing that happens every night of the week. So don't show up on a Wednesday and wonder why there's no mardi gras really happening it's just select nights but free with park entry but yes but free with your park entry because uh part of mardi gras is obviously there's a lot of uh street atmosphere happening with a bunch of uh a bunch of actors walking around and really getting you in the mardi gras spirit as well as uh part of new york is blocked off and there's semi-authentic New Orleans style food. Um, We're using that term yes, loosely. Yes, using it loosely uh, to hear about past food experiences. There, go back and watch older episodes we've did. We've done about uh, Mardi Gras food. It's 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 satisfactory, but it's not authentic uh, at the at the least. But um, no, there's all that, and then on top of it, the big stuff that happens is the parade, um, which this year. They are already retooling the parade a little bit. It just happened really? two years ago, and they're replacing some of the floats. They're doing five new floats that uh, are from around the world, and it was really weird. On their blog, they only listed four of them, but four of the five new floats will be a Venetian Carnival, Oktoberfest, 4th of July, and Rio de Janeiro. So I, I think it's going to actually be kind of cool because the last time around they had that they they, they added kind of the, focused on transportation and exactly. past floats yeah it was they changed it from the first one that i saw that was i don't know how i would describe the first one i saw it was a lot more uh around it was a lot of around the world style stuff with the uh with the day of the dead floats and then the chinese float and that was still in there but then they added the transportation ones that had a more steampunk feel to it mm-hmm. and the hot air balloon the train and uh, uh, one other one was there a plane or boat in there somewhere yeah yep there was uh and so now that they're going back with this kind of around the world 
uh, theme as well, too. I think it could be promising if whenever we ride on a float this year, if we do, if we're lucky enough, uh, I'm pretty pumped to get on that Oktoberfest one. So might have to sneak on a few uh, beers on that float. Are we going to get really you in some in leader hosen for that? Um, oh, that's no, you have some, no. don't you? I do not have later hosen. Oh, I thought you picked it up in your whirlwind tour last year. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I did look for it, but apparently it's not as common as you would actually think. It's in a lot mm. of like. I'm just being let down it, left and right come today. In his yeah, size. I'm sorry. Well, no. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. It does. It does come <laughs> in my size, but I, I thought that there would be like more stores that had authentic versions of it, and it turns out that it's something that a lot of tourists like to buy, but. I'm guessing that not it's a lot like of local handmade by locals for locals. If they do wear it for celebrations like that, I is that FUBU that you're describing? If, yes, <laughs> sure. I, I don't know if any of this bias. is accurate at all, but at the same time, too, I couldn't find any that were satisfactory to my needs, so that's why I did not bring back any. But I will try to find a way to get later hosen for this event. Um, you forgot to mention the most important part of Mardi Gras. Adam Lambert. I'm sure we're talking about the concerts, and that's where we're going next. No. No? The beads. Hello. Yes. <laughs> beads. Bees? Beads. 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 If, if anyone watches Are you going to talk about the beads now? You wanted to talk about them. I thought you beads, were going to talk about them. They're my favorite part. I go crazy trying to catch as many beads every year as I possibly can. And you should explain how you get the beads at Universal Mardi it's Gras. It's a little bit different than the uh, real Mardi Gras experience, from what I understand, although I've never been to the real Mardi Gras experience. But the way that you catch beads at Universal is to hold your hands out and say, throw me beads. And uh, shirts on, throw me beads. That's just yes. kind of how it goes. The people on the floats throw beads at you, and you try to get as many as you can during the parade. Yeah, there's there's no exposing your body parts in order to get the beads. Uh, I believe nope. you would probably be ejected You'd from probably, the park. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so keep your um, lady and man parts in your clothing and just stretch out your hands. And guess what? You'll get beads. Yeah, it's, because it's one of those times where, like, the expression, like, Keep your pants on. You'll get some... Be- like, that could be an actual relevant expression. It would be literal. Yeah. Literal. <laughs> As opposed to just like an idiom or something. Oh, and of course, it is a, a, it's a family-friendly event for the most part. Uh, we use that term loosely because, uh, you know, some of the, the performers, stilt walkers, you know, they will be... I don't want to say half-naked, but they midriffs will be, will be showing. Yeah. And um, some some people who are more on the conservative the conservative side might feel like they're a little they're not dressed up enough yeah i think that people who are more conservative would consider especially some of the women more scantily clad yes slightly Ma- inappropriate for males, younger audiences males um can also be bare-breasted in the parade yeah. pretty much all the men are shirtless <laughs> and if they if they do have clothing on then it's usually like a jacket over their still shirtless bodies i'm giggling so. in excitement not i'm not making fun of you or anything Yes, I'm I'm I know you're. He's just all it's also a, over there. a little, uh, little booze heavy event as well. It can oh, be yeah. sometimes. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if it's as not bad as, as Halloween most Horror Universal Nights, but... events are. Yeah, but in this in this sense, it's not the same as Halloween Horror Nights, where people get scared and start punching because of no. the booze. This is more, uh, you know, people just get boozed up in randy i guess um <laughs> let's talk about the concert lineup that is happening this year i'm gonna go through all of them select nights for for all of this you know go to disunplug.com we'll link to uh the article that we have up with all the mardi gras information but let's run through it uh february 6th hunter hayes february 13th diana ross wow diana okay. ross that kind of came out of left field i know that's I a supreme lineup alive. Ha, ha, ha. Shut up. I see what Nailed you it. did there. Boom, still got it. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, February 14th, Bare Naked Ladies. Again. Nice. Valentine's Day, Bare Naked Ladies. Right there again. February 20th, Nate Roosts. Here's a big one. February 27th, Fallout Boy. That That's pretty is crazy. a big one. This, they, I have a feeling this will be on the level that Kelly Clarkson was yeah, last year with so. how insane I mean, they have the place will be. an active, like, single, uh, an album out right now. Like, this, is this, like, kicking off their tour? It's, it's got to be part well, no. of the tour, you know? like Yeah, but they've already had, on this album, three singles. 
because they had Immortals with. Uh, I think this is a new that album. Uma Thurman song, no, right? that's on. That's it's Immortals the same one? is on there too. as part of Big Hero Six, and then they had um, the Uma Thurman. The Uma song. Thurman, but and there's then a new, they just released a new one. Yeah, it, it, too. is the new one from that album? Yes, or is it's this, still from that. Okay, album. Okay, because I was thinking this was a new album, but I don't. I don't think it is. But that's. Um, Still. either way, I mean, they're very, very popular, very relevant right now. They're in like the top 10. So, oh, yeah, it's, no, it's, it's going to be insane, but I actually, I am interested to go and see it. I can get anywhere close to it. Uh, March 5th, cool in the gang celebrate. There we go. Okay. Uh, March 12th, another exciting one, uh, for us in the age that we grew up, the fray. I think you mean oh. myself. And my, yeah, and myself. Eh, I don't know. <laughs> Jenny Lynn might have liked the freight. Uh, South Florida. Sorry, Pitbull yeah. is not on the lineup this Man. year. I should say that. Didn't make um, the cut, huh? Do you know the fray when he says the fray, Jenny? No. You know, know how to yeah. save a life. Cable car. Nope. Sorry. You don't know how to save a life. Well, sing. Hum, Everyone knows. Hum it. a few yeah. bars. Let me see if um, I can recognize it. She goes left and I go right. They. I can never understand what they're saying I in any songs, that but that qualifies it, you know, as something a few bars. Can I, I play I it or will like it? Is it not okay? Are we gonna Shazam this or something? No. no, keep telling the lineup. I'll get a cue and I'll I'll cue it up. Hold on. All right. Go yeah, ahead. but remember, we can only play like. I'm gonna give her the. Seconds. I'm gonna get the chorus. Okay. Make Don't sure work. you're on mute too there while we're doing this. So no pitbull. Um, yeah, no pitbull. Uh, which we'll get to pitbull because we have to at least mention pitbull a little bit further in here. March 13th, Adam Lambert. Yay. Um, March 19th, Sean Mendez. Also this year. Now I know who he is because I love that Stitches song. Okay. You know that song, okay. right? Nope. Fantastic. You guys know that's um, like the, the number, it's a hello, I and then the next song is like Stitches. I don't listen to popular music. <sighs> Sorry. Uh, March 20th, uh, Three Doors Down, which I oh. didn't think they were still around. but I didn't know they were still around either. That's cool. If yeah, they played only like songs army. from their first two albums that were popular, that might be okay. But mm-hmm. if they try to drop any new music, it's gonna get awful uh march 26 i'll be there for this one as long as we're in town reo speedwagon that'll be fun uh april 2nd a little good old t-pain action really yeah nice okay uh t-pain april 9th jesse j and april 16th yondell i don't know i don't know who yondell is i got stuck on you know bling bling cha-ching cha-ching jesse j yeah, no, I I think overall though they have is they have a really good lineup. Mm-hmm. Um, well, excellent I think lineup. in general, Universal usually does. I I'm usually more impressed with Universal's lineup, concert lineups than you know what Epcot brings in. Oh, a hundred percent. But I think this year, uh, should, should I, I mean, just right off the top with Fall Out Boy, uh, Diana Ross, just a complete legend. Um, mm-hmm. As much as I don't like, I don't. Sorry, I don't dislike Jesse J. But oh, I like I, Jesse J. I also will listen to her music. Just right there, those three, uh, and Sean Mendez apparently too. I think those are some uh, still a thing. Some he's like an, he's an active. He's like up and coming still a th- not still a thing like that. Well, he would have been booked before that song thing. gained traction. But he also was like the main. The you know how on every Disney soundtrack they have like the one person who covers the main song yeah. from the movie he just did it for like descendants and oh, so that was okay. a big deal well, yeah but no one gives a crap about i know i know so. but then he's Except got some other song with a with another girl in it that's really popular too right now wow. I, i'm just telling you so the, descriptive the drive back from florida i heard i have heard stitches so many times it is insane but i'm gonna play you that chorus that song Has but i'm he not surpassed taylor I'm swift count. for you no 15 God, no. seconds out before it, well we, i'm not playing it right. through the sound through this so you'll hear it through the microphone but it's not going to feed through the thing okay. so everybody calm so we'll have down. to give a we'll have to give a time stamp to everyone at home who wants to sync up with this <laughs> Okay. Yes, I've she heard knows that song it. Yeah, before. of course okay. she knows it. We all know it. And if we don't all know it, then... We can go to Universal and find out if we don't know it. Exactly. So, overall, I think, my personal opinion, I think that 2016 Mardi Gras has the potential on paper to be the best year that 
they've had since I've started That's attending. That's a big statement yeah. coming from you. You're usually pretty hard on Universal. I'm, yeah, yeah, you have to be... To really be a fan of something, in my opinion, you have to be able to criticize it for its faults. And in this case, I, I'm i trying to find something to criticize them on. I mean, well, still the food. I think they need to do a complete retooling of their food uh, in order to be to really get that whole Mardi Gras experience. Because, I mean, you can just go to Louisiana sometime or a, a good like New Orleans-style restaurant, and you'll be able to get... Uh, more authentic food and know than whenever you have it at Universal that it's not it's not quite hitting the mark. But uh, the fact that they actually have um, the actual bands from New Orleans come in and play on the small stage and yeah, everything cool. about it, it's just it's such a cool event. Can so. I hit you with a park strategy question? Yep. All right. So you've got the concert lineup, which is amazing. And let's say that on a particular evening, you have a uh, an artist that you cannot miss that concert. Um, how do you incorporate that with everything else Mardi Gras? Or do you just have to skip the parade and make sure you have your spot near the stage? Yeah. Uh, I mean, one of the most popular spots, and I will be, this- I'm going to be flat out honest, I didn't not listen to you say that entire no but i i'm just i'm just Um, gonna say like we should do a show like specifically about how to get the best experience out of mardi gras yeah and maybe do like with the mardi gras overview or something for the first one i think this is a little far out though we didn't even get to to do it soon so the people can plan well we'll we'll figure it out we'll get there we'll do this after the show we'll come up with a, a strategy for this but look at this organization yeah we try we try um in my personal opinion, to have the best concert experience slash Mardi Gras experience, I would get there early, maybe five o'clock ish, set up where kind of like right across from the Monsters Cafe, right on the road, on the concert side of it. So that way you can literally stand there and watch the parade pass you by, and then you just have to turn around, and the stage is right there. And yeah, you'll be way far back in the stage, but if you just want to have be able to see both of them without that much inconvenience, that's kind of the best place to do it. But again, you have to get there very early in order to make that happen. I want to say whenever I saw Huey Lewis and did that strategy, it was at 4.30. That was probably a little too early, but... It I mean, all just depends. Well, on the, on the flip side, you don't want to wait too late. Rhino and I went to go see Kelly Clarkson last year. He's not paying any attention. But, I'm listening. Um, we couldn't get anywhere near the yeah. stage. We were like around a corner near Shrek and had to watch the concert on one of their. Um, I forget what those things are. Those boards. it was one of the yeah it was on one of the screens and that yeah. was right after you guys rode on the float. Whereas Corey right. and I were there for the media event. And we were in the media spot covering it, and then things were just so crazy we couldn't even get to the media viewing spot for the concert. Oh my! It was that it was that packed and well, insane. It, so. Again, because she's one of those artists like Fall Out Boy will be, where you just you gotta make sure you have your spot. Yeah. Gotta I got I got perfectly. I got some uh, whatever ones you want to go to with me too. I got some ways. We'll be up there. Don't worry. Yeah, I don't care. Um, so. Well, then you can sit in the effing back while I watch them front row. No, oh, okay. Okay. I already know Rhino's secret, but I'm not going to say how it is. It helps to be paired with people. I know. Um, so I think we just beat Mardi Gras to death in terms of all of that discussion. So shall we mythos? I think we shall. <laughs> okay, we went there to do a dining review, as we've said 16 times since this show started. Uh, before we really get into the discussion, though, Rhino was gracious enough to put together a video that kind of gives you a feel of what Mythos actually uh, looks like, as well as the food that we had in there. So uh, for those of you who are listening to this, uh, if you want to watch the video, go to youtube.com slash info for this video. And for everyone watching on uh, watching the live broadcast or watching this back on youtube later it's it's right here uh so wait wait maybe it's not it's not i no i forgot i muted the thing for the for the thing I'm, I'm glad i didn't even start it yet so okay See, that's where you got to hold up the sign that says stall for time i know my dry erase yes. board i don't know where it is so uh here we go rhino's video of mythos and roll it
So Mythos, a restaurant that is in the Lost Continent section of Islands of Adventure, uh, one of Universal's proudest accomplishments in the dining arena of the original restaurants that they've created themselves, uh, very intricately themed, known as one of the best themed not restaurants, not because of food necessarily, but because of theming. And uh, we've talked about it before. That is very old and outdated. The sign that they hang out in the front of the park. Rated and number one theme park dining experience by Theme Park Insider for yes. the year of. I think it's like. It's like 2010 or 2011. It's even earlier than that. I want to say. It's from another. I don't decade. know it off the top of my head. Uh, but oh, there it is. Yeah, but that's just too. It's too small for us to see. Yeah, sorry. It says number it's one theme small. park restaurant inside six years in a row. It doesn't give you the years. Yeah, and uh, they're um, not recent by theme years. park insider. Um, and I, th- of course, I don't want this to come off sounding poorly, but that you know, if I hear like TripAdvisor says it or Yelp, something like that, that's a little different. This is like us saying that we rate it, the Diz rates it, the best themed restaurant six years theme in a row. Park is, Insider is a blogger media outlet yes. like and, us. Yes. And, you know, I, I, we're honest so people understand our opinions the same way they are. But at the same time, too, um, we're, we're not Jesus here saying... <laughs> How, how good something is. but Disney's uh, going to hang a sign outside of one of their restaurants saying we've rated them exactly as such and such. Yeah, so um, don't, don't necessarily trust the sign by the outside. But yeah, uh, just from the basics, we'll start with the architecture, the feel of this restaurant. Um, it, it, it's beautiful, to say the least. Uh, it does... The Lost Continent area in general is kind of underrated in terms of how pretty the entire section is. Uh, the The architecture all around the area it has that feel that of going back to that Greek Roman age where all of these monuments to the gods collapsed. Ancient and, ruins and exactly uh, legends and myths, mythical creatures ruling the world. Yes. Yeah, and uh, it's all togas and tiaras and mermaids and pegasi, and it just all translates into this mermaids. restaurant. Um, yes, there's a lot of mermaid boobage. So that's your first hashtag yeah, for the year: they mermaid don't boobage. To cover too much with their hair. Um, but yeah, I we can't say enough good things about how pretty this restaurant is. Uh, along with that, though, comes some. A little bit more negative aspects, I want to say, in terms of the seating. Uh, for this review, we were seated in a booth, um, which was comfortable. Yes, but uh, we were not seated there originally. We weren't We weren't seated there originally. Originally, we were at a table. And I've got to tell you, from my personal opinion at least, these, while it made me feel like I had great posture sitting in these chairs, they were the most uncomfortable, heavy <laughs> cast iron chairs i have ever experienced Emphasis in my life on heavy now i realize that i am not hercules um but i couldn't i mean i really struggled to move this chair an inch away from the table to sit in it they were really really heavy like unnecessarily heavy exactly um and they have a ton of seating on the inside it's kind of it's I, I can't give you like a general approximation. What did we say on the door? It said like occupancy Four, 200 or 400. No, it was 400 and something. Yeah, there, there's a lot. And then there's even outdoor seating too for uh, whenever there's nicer weather. Um, just in general, I, can, I can't complain about anything in terms of the seating in this restaurant and uh, the environment that you're dining in. It's, Wait a minute. Except, <laughs> except it's extremely loud on the inside yes it's absolutely beautiful you walk in it's this massive cavernous type feel with um sculptures and you see the legendary creatures um carved in at various places the lighting is um it's a very low lighting and they've got fountains and all of that but when you're saying the seating i think that depends on where you're sitting are you not forgetting are you forgetting where they sat us at I, first i'm not forgetting about that we'll get there whenever we go through the full experience oh, this okay. is more just about this the, is the overview yeah this is the overview of the 
the whole interior and I, also with like the lighting and stuff that changes depending on what time of the day it is because there's just the giant windows looking out to the outside of the rest of the park which have some incredible views um but at the same time too at the at the start of your meal like whenever we started it was still very bright outside so mm -hmm. i feel like the restaurant was very well lit towards the end it did get dark but um, okay but i have to say in their defense there are other restaurants that purposefully lower their lighting as the evening gets darker to uh, artificially produce this effect yeah and you know what though i did once we could actually see some of the interior lighting in there it made it a little bit more grand kind of in yeah, my opinion too. it felt it felt elegant to a degree i liked it i'm not elegant on the fine dining level that they consider it to be but no, still no. very elegant yes. nonetheless um well now let's go with our experience so we did have a dining reservation for mythos as we recommend anyone to ever get uh, because Mythos is a very popular restaurant. It's only one of two uh, full-service restaurants inside Islands of Adventure that and Confisco's at um, the Port of Entry. And so because of that, um, for people who don't want to leave the park to go to a full-service restaurant, they have very limited options. And because Mythos is so highly spoken of, it's even more popular than Confisco's. Uh, and Not once have I ever been successful in getting a walk up into Mythos. Yeah, I, and I've tried a number of times. I have for lunch on kind of an off time of the year once, but that was the only other time I've ever eaten there. Um, so in terms of this entire review in general, I guess it should be stated that this goes in from a very uh, a, kind of a very good outlook on it because my first time at Mythos, I didn't really go in trying to review it just go, went in and had a good time and um i enjoyed myself and i enjoyed the meal so i i went in with some very good expectations on this one uh, we had to pull dining room reservations thanks rhino you're welcome he made them <laughs> was 4 30 we had 4 30 reservations was that the uh the only one that was available at all no. no there was there was one all day and then until 4 30 and then after 4 30 there were none left okay so we just got lucky at our timing um but anyways yeah 4 30 reservation whenever we showed up uh it was a very busy lobby to uh to walk into i would say there was about 20 people waiting in general some i mean one was a big group that included a uh, a disunplugged listener leslie right i don't Les remember leslie she was from canada yes i believe it was leslie i'm gonna go with leslie hey leslie yeah you know who you are with her adorable daughter who was picking on rhino she uh I, and i quote said I don't care if you're famous. <laughs> and I said, I think you're playing fast and loose with that word famous here. She said, well, I don't care if you're on the internet. Like it was something like a big deal because somebody was on the internet. <laughs> and she, she, she was, was funny. She was rather precocious. It was entertaining. I wanted to keep um, her. Yeah, but it was a very, very busy uh, lobby, which cute. made me expect that whenever we got into the restaurant that they would be on a solid wait. Uh, this was not the case at all though the restaurant was i would say over half empty mm -hmm. um in general which of course that can happen because they don't have enough server staff on right at that current time which because also it should be seemed slow. to be the case because not only was the restaurant half empty but a number of the tables weren't actually set for guests exactly and even in that regards the tables that they would seat for guests were very strange choices uh because you know the restaurant's half empty we look in we think that we're going to kind of be off by ourselves which was what you would normally think instead we get sat beside a table of six where two of the kids were up on top of their booth with their legs flinging out almost kicked rhino in the face yeah. and our table <laughs> yeah was so close to this booth that you would have thought that they were supposed to be connected to each other and they just moved it slightly away for our benefit it, it absolutely ridiculous but i've never seen such an odd table arrangement in a restaurant before in my life they did have the fixed booth there but then they had our standalone table i was it even a foot from the booth table? I'd say nine inches. I mean, when the woman got up from the booth to 
Yeah, I could have laid to remove her down. herself from the table. Her rear end was in our faces. Oh yeah, a bit. It was basically on top of our tabletop, and then, like you said, the the kids, you know, nearly kicking right out in the face. Oh yeah, no, it was pandemonium, it, and uh, it was almost like they were trying to join our tables together. They were so close. I know, I know, but uh, thank thankfully you didn't enjoy the experience at all so you got up instantly no, that was and not gonna to work the... for a meal for me i mean <laughs> no, 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 no. i should i should i think i need to back up for a second i was waiting i wasn't sure when to bring this up but when you make the reservation online it does ask are you celebrating anything like the same with disney like yeah. if you call and do the reservation they'll ask you birthday anniversary whatever and every time i've done it with disney they're always like oh here's the button and i've never done it for universal or anything like that and i know they have a birthday button so i put in that it was my i was like well i'll consider this my birthday dinner because my birthday was last week so um that was never mentioned or brought up to me the entire time but even in the email that was sent to me it said for a birthday dinner Hmm. so i don't i that was like already like uh, weird and then we sat down and already mm, so that might have i have been, a different feeling about this place than i think that might have been a consequence of our stellar service that we see yeah. that we received well i think the, the person who checks you in is supposed to do it yeah that's at disney it is. that's a yeah that's a good start um however too uh let's be let's be real your birthday was six days ago at that point you were kind of milking it a little and bit. And when people come to celebrate their vacation here at the theme parks, they come to... Ce- so that was my celebration day of my birthday. Yes, and I... Under a week. I... No. Okay. I'm going to... We're going to go on a tangent here. <laughs> and this is going to be a mini Craig rant because I, I know people do. They can't always travel right whenever their birthday is. But... You know, if it's one or two days after, I understand that. But once you start getting into a week or a month or six months or, you know, that person. I'm going for a birthday dinner with some friends tonight because I was out of the state until 10 p.m. Sunday night. That was your choice. Right. It is his choice. That was your choice. That's what his point is. It's his choice. That was your choice. But my friend said, let's go for a birthday dinner tonight. And I think you are ridiculous for still celebrating your birthday so far along the line later, as well as anyone out there. And if you have a problem with me because of it, that is I'll give somebody a week. I'll give you seven days. I won't even give you that. It's There's nothing more obnoxious. And I love my sister to death. And I know she watches this and will get mad. But she will, whenever it comes to her birthday, she do, she'll do like seven days before her birthday and seven days after. If we're at Disney at all, she will have the birthday button on. And it's just, that's too long. It's your birthday on one day. It's well, not birth week. See, I, I being a New Year's Day, one. I get the two-day celebration. So, it's cool. <laughs> it's not a birth week, birth month. It's a birthday. And that's how it needs to remain. And if they would have came over to our table and sang happy birthday to you, I would have... I didn't dro- want them to sing happy birthday. on the ground and I would have walked away. <laughs> I just wanted the button. When you get the button at the front of the park. I don't want to get it. I just want somebody to say happy birthday. Here's You're a lazy SOB. <laughs> so. A... I'm a fan of unbirthdays too. But anyway, go ahead. So we were moved into a booth, which was very comfortable, to say the least. Um, great views in the entire restaurant. No kids' feet in our faces or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and. It was a big roomy table. Yes, it was a big roomy table. I enjoyed it. Uh, and we saw the, the hostess kind of talk to our server and let them know, let him know that we were switching tables and he said, okay. Um, and then at that point we sat there and we weren't really in a rush at that point. This was Mm -hmm. after waiting about, I want to say 15, 20 minutes in the lobby, even though our reservation was at a four thirty, we got seated about four fifty. And we'd all um, had kind of a long day at work. So we were, we were ready to kind of relax and enjoy our meal. Yeah. And, uh. So we were just hanging out. I didn't even take note of the time at that point. It wasn't bothering me at all that, you know, we we had been sitting there maybe 10 minutes before a survey came up. But that's because the, the manager of the restaurant that was on duty, the floor manager, uh, got our drink order for us and was, what was extremely. His name, Craig? Um, oh, I have it in my notes and I don't want to pull it out. Siraj. Siraj. Like that's Mirage. right. I kept calling him Mirage. <laughs> His name was Sir. <laughs> he was a real person. He wasn't uh, there. We will not mention the name of our server because no, he was terrible. To protect the innocent. But Siraj was a very good floor manager. Yes, uh, a very good floor manager. Um. 
So yeah, then, then he did come to our table, our server, and asked if we had any questions, and we did. Uh, we asked for his recommendations. Uh, on terms, in terms of the appetizers, he recommended the Spanakopita. Uh, in terms of the entrees, he recommended the Pad Thai and the Cranberry Blue Cheese Pork, as well as the Signature Mythos Burger that's a lamb burger. Uh, those were his big recommendations. And so we took those into consideration. And we started with the Meze Platter, as well as the Spanakopita, for our appetizers. And they also gave us... And they also gave us bread. Um, now, the bread here is very crunchy on the outside. A little bit hard on the inside, but with a little bit of softness, too, depending on where you bite. It's, it's not spongy. It's not my favorite bread. It's a little coarse. I get where yeah. they were going with it, but it, it worked. It was, tu- it was a little tough to... I, I don't know. I mean, it works with the appetizers that we got. Yes, it worked very well with the meze platter because of... Um, the, we, I won't talk about it yet, but okay. one of if just the bread service alone, you get the bread and then you get the butter, the butter. which everyone loves the butter here because it's stamped with Universal Orlando Resort That's on it. Fun. It's it's very fun butter to say the least. Um, the meze platter, as I've said now for the third time that we've we ordered, it contained hummus, hummus. olives, um, about one full pita cut up into ten sections. A dip. I don't know what it was. It was a, more like a. I um, forgot to bring the menu up. Give me a second. I don't even know if it said it on the menu. It did. Oh, okay. Our waiter certainly did not tell us. That that's the thing. It there was, was like there was a lot of stuff. Like I, there was. It was like a creamy cucumbery dippy thing. My my issue was I had questions about stuff, and this guy was barely ever to be seen, and. Um, it just, it was frustrating. I don't know. And I dropped my fork at one point and I don't even know if it was him or somebody else that came out or, or something. So I, yeah, I don't know. I oh, don't sorry. Know. It was their take on Baba Ganoush. Oh, see. I wouldn't really how would call I have that Baba that? Ganoush yeah. at all. Um, but according to the menu. Doesn't that have eggplant in it? I've never made it myself. It's supposed to have cooked eggplant mixed with onions, tomatoes, olive oil, and various seasons. I this, did not taste eggplant in that at all. This tasted almost like the yum yum sauce at a, a Japanese steakhouse. Um, and then the last thing on it was uh, the marinated fennel, which is oh. what looked like onions there. Overall, I really enjoyed this platter. Uh, the yeah. hummus was good. The dip, while not baba ganoush, in my opinion was still very tasty uh the olives mm, i'm the only one who ate the olives but not a kalamata olive i'm an, person i'm an olives. olive fan and uh you know having that extra bread at our table that we didn't have before that we, we were able to take full advantage of the amount of hummus and baba ganoush they gave us and be able to to use the bread on that so that ended up being lucky for us uh we also had the spanakopita I was going to say, I think I got the creamy cucumbery thing mixed up. Was that what that that's was? That's what that was. Yeah, that's okay. what that was. That's uh, the, what I was in love with. The Spanakopita was a crispy wonton wrapper filled with a house-made blend of spinach, feta cheese, and fresh herbs served with a cucumber red onion salad, olive tapenada, and tzatzaki sauce. It was good. Yeah, well, not super authentic Spanakopita. But I was into uh, it. You can never go wrong with spinach feta. Hmm. Tataki that sauce. that was the I mean, as much as we struggled with our server throughout the evening, I felt like that was a good recommendation. I enjoyed that appetizer more than the other platter. Yeah, Rhino, your thoughts? Uh, it was good. I mean, I I like I like Spanakopita a lot. It's definitely one of the when we do food and wine, I always stop in Greece to get it if they have it there. And um, this was a little different because it was in those wontons. Um, but the wontons were good. They were light and crispy, and I liked that business in the cup. And, uh, you know, right there it's in the cup. And wow, you are just giving a, such a descriptive review. I, the I, audio audience is really going to eat this one up. <laughs> I said crispy wonton. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I, 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 you said it, but I, don't, I still don't believe that's what it is. What you said was in the cup. What was in the cup? 
inside the yeah. wonton? Yeah. Spinach? No, not yeah, in the no. wonton. I'm inside not an the idiot. What's inside the sauce? Then we had it my was, description of the creamy tzatziki sauce. Yeah, no, sauce. that is. It, typically, it's served with like a, a hero or... You know, other group oh, food. Oh, then but that's a lot thicker yeah, than I'm it, ever used to because I thought it was cream cheese or uh, sour cream. And that's why I was – you're saying this and I'm yes. like oh. – No, it was way – it was way too solid to be okay. tzatzaki. I would say it was like a tzatzaki cream. Yeah. It, that definitely wasn't that's a sauce. Good. Yeah. It was, it was thick. You know, I'm used to it being drizzled on right. top of my heroes. But but I'd eat, I'd eat it again. Yeah. Both of those appetizers. But you're right. For me – I liked the hummus platter as the winner just because I, I thought the, uh, the I'm sorry, the meze plate, because I, even though I don't like olives, everything else on that was really good. And it, it's just a nice light. It, I don't know. Yeah. Good. Before before as, we get too far. Sorry. I was going to say as a side note, that is the same hummus that they serve in Confisco's. Yeah. So uh, for those of you that are huge hummus fans and aren't able to get a reservation at Mythos or don't want to pay the prices of Mythos, you can get a more reasonable meal of hummus and pita bread and so on and so forth at Confisco's. Yes. Um, Mm -hmm. One thing that's important to note about Mythos itself is that it prides itself on uh, being very uh, gluten-free friendly and vegan friendly. Which it Um, was. Yes, which it was. And menu items that can be made as gluten-free or vegan are noted with a GF or a V. And it's... That being said, you have to ask for it at that point. It, it can be prepared. It's not automatically prepared that way. Okay, well, wait. The V... Okay, first of all, we need to say that this is somewhat notable, and I've never seen this before. On this menu, the majority of the entrees on the menu were really um, accommodated one or another special diet. So the majority of things on the menu were either gluten-free or vegetarian. And the V stands for vegetarian, but the vegetarian items that were on the menu, you can ask for them to be modified to be made vegan. They come vegetarian. You have to ask for them to be made vegan. Okay. There's a difference. Okay. 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 It all falls flat there. No. All right. I just, I just wanted, I didn't want people to be confused. It, it does come out naturally vegetarian. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's all. Okay. That's all I got. So in terms of our appetizers, the meze platter, meze platter could have been made gluten-free. I wonder I, what it would be, would it have been gluten-free? Gluten-free bread. Pe- yeah. Mm. Was the pita bread not gluten-free? I guess not naturally. Okay. So sorry the meze platter just to note that was $8.99 and the spanakopita was uh $7.99 I don't think either of those were too ridiculous maybe the meze platter was a slightly overpriced but how much did I you say it was it. $8.99 no I, I enjoyed yeah, it I think, because I, I liked everything that was on the platter yeah so I would have been happy paying eight well I was happy paying $8.99 <laughs> for it so really shouldn't say anything else um our entrees Shall we get into that? I want to start, I believe, with Rhino, Mr. Pad Thai, that could have been made gluten-free or vegan. Mm-hmm. It sure gonna, could have been. We're going to talk about it? I, we sure can. Here Do it is. Do you want me to read the description oh, first? Um, yes, please. Okay. It contained rice noodles, mixed vegetables, chicken and shrimp tossed in a sweet and sour peanut sauce. Sixteen ninety nine. Oh. Yeah. Um... I like Pad Thai. I li- There's a Thai place right near my house I like to go to. So, it, you know, it's it's one of those things that, like, you know, pay away. I like Pad Thai there. So I like to get it at different places because I – it's, you know, usually a little spicy. A little uh, – that's how I like my food. Um, the one here, you know, beautiful presentation, very bright, very colorful. Um, now that you're saying sweet and sour, that makes sense to me uh, because when I, I first bit into it, I had to have you try it um, too because – I, um, I, you can't see, I, there was, I, I felt like there was like a kind of a sauce or something, um, that was a little, giving me a little bit of a citrus vibe. Was, I, we thought it was orange, but I think we just kept saying orange because everything was orange colored where we were. So I, I don't actually think it was orange colored. I think it was just one of those weird disassociative things, but, um, I don't know. I still tasted the orange in there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I tasted it. You right. did too. I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't tell. It was one of those like mind tricks. Like somebody's watching me in the kitchen to see, you know, does he know there's an orange? 
Um, but it was good. Um, it's it. I don't. I don't know. Sixteen ninety nine seems a little pricey. My issue with it was um, the chicken in pad thai. When you make pad thai, the meats are supposed to be very thinly sliced, and it was like thick, really thick. Like it seemed like someone had forgotten chicken, cut open one of the freezer bags, and dumped out those pre cut pieces of chicken. Or even in those carver boxes that they make now for like sandwich um, mm-hmm. sandwiches, it, so that to me I would even recommend go get it, but don't get it with chicken. You know, ask to not have the chicken because it was actually like a little overwhelming, like too much chicken. Yeah. Um, but it was um, the portion size was good. Yes, absolutely. There was a there was more than enough on the plate, um, and I don't know. It, it's not. It's not the worst pad thai I've ever had. It's not the best pad thai. It was a little different. I'd probably give it like a six and a half or a seven. Okay. Yeah, I'd say. I'd say like, especially as far as theme park food goes, it was, you know, it was nice to have a little bit of an elevated option. Okay. Yeah. JL got the seasonal risotto that could also be made gluten-free slash vegan. A seasonal offering crafted with ingredients at their peak for fifteen ninety nine. JL, talk about your red slash purple risotto okay. first of all the presentation was awful i mean i i think that's due to the seasonal vegetables that they used which was primarily uh beets this there was um quite a, quite a presence of pickled beets in this dish and it came out looking something that your cat would throw up on the floor you know that, that you didn't want to step in um but with that being said um, if you if you could get past that, it actually tasted really good. I enjoyed my meal. Um, I, I did ask for it to be prepared um, vegan. So um, I thought that it had a really good balance between um, in flavor. There was a bit of the pickled beet flavor, but then it wasn't too much. There were some bites that I had that maybe um, were a little bit more bland, but then I'd get a really good bite of the of the pickled beets, and that kind of brought it back around, and then it, it evened itself out. I, I didn't want too much of the pickled beet thing yeah. happening. That can be a little bit overwhelming and terrible. Um, it just... It, the, the greens in it were good, and I felt like the portion size wasn't enormous, but um, I didn't want too much of this in the first place, so yeah. that suited me, at least on that particular day. I didn't want something very heavy, yeah. and this was actually perfect in that sense. Was it the best meal that I've ever had? No, far from it, yeah. um, but it was, it was good, and... You know, unfortunately, people who are on special diets, um, especially vegans, you don't normally have a lot of very good options in the theme parks as far as food goes. This actually was a decent one that I would go in there and purposefully eat again, you know, not out of obligation for the show or whatever. This is something I would go in and sit down with my family and purposefully order because I enjoyed it. Very nice. Um <clears throat> Yeah, it, I mean, yours did look scary on the plate. It looks gross. Uh, it looks radioactive in this it picture. It's got like that green. Really <laughs> nasty. It's got the olive oil on the <laughs> yeah. bottom, just, just energy. like really I highlighting. Mean, that thing came out and got set down on the table, and the three of us just kind of went. <laughs> I was just open. It wasn't mine, <laughs> but I know it wasn't mine because I had the uh, the blue cheese cranberry pork, one of the other recommendations by our server, and uh, mine was a seared pork loin uh that was all it was supposed to be crusted in the cranberry blue cheese kind of uh mixture but that was more or less just lumped on sauce saw top on top served with mashed potatoes uh red cabbage and then for some reason on the bottom of the plate they had a whole bunch of brown gravy and the pork this this dish was also fourteen ninety nine. The pork itself, um, I don't. It was cooked a little too well for me, so it started to get that chewy factor. Mm-hmm. Uh, but overall, the flavor was good, especially of the cranberry blue cheese. I'm a huge blue cheese nut. Uh, was it dry because it was overcooked? Yeah, it was starting to get that dry, chewy. It well, it, but then closer towards where the fat was still on the pork loin. There was that was definitely a bit more moist, but 
but overall there was definite places in the actual pork loin itself where it was a little on the dry side and uh nothing not to the point that i would ever send it back because the flavor was still excellent you just had to chew a little harder nothing i mean for 14.99 for this dish you can't complain about it being slightly overcooked because this dish in a disney restaurant would have probably been about 30 bucks Mm -hmm. um easily uh the the mashed potatoes while a nice option to also have on the plate to get your starch uh i don't think it really fit in because they did serve it with that brown gravy then that didn't really go with the cranberry blue cheese uh but the red cabbage served along with it was great i'm very confused doesn't brown gravy usually go with mashed potatoes brown gravy does but i wouldn't put ground ground (laughs) gravy i wouldn't put ground gravy with a bunch of uh cranberries and cabbage red cabbage all that that kind of tart sweeter fruits in there it didn't it didn't all it tasted good but it would have tasted better had there been no gravy on the plate and it was just left and i actually i looked at have you ever had thanksgiving in america yes i have we eat cranberry sauce and and mashed potatoes and gravy i am very particular though about my foods trying to not touch each other okay i'm unless it's if it's (sighs) Stay with me on this one because right, I am I'm weird. In terms of in terms of like uh, Thanksgiving dinner, I can do that where you do like the mashed potatoes and stuffing, stuffing without cranberries on top of that and then layer the turkey on and put gravy all over top of that. I, I can do it that way. But as soon as you add a fruit into that mix, gravy has to go. So well, I can eat stuffing with we'll cranberries. We'll start bringing uh, one of those segmented plates where it divides up, you know, the plate and we'll hand it to the server in yeah. the restaurants and say, hey, could you please give Craig his meal on this dish? It, it would be preferred that way. <laughs> Overall, though, I, I enjoyed this dish. Yeah. Uh, I can't. I can't say anything too bad against it. I, I did look at pictures of how it used to be served before, and it was served with this uh, mashed potato, sweet potato mixture. And I thought that that would have been a much better fit for it um, if they would have still served it. But I guess if they can't get the right ingredients at this restaurant, then they don't use them. So that's that's nice to know. But um, mm. but yeah, so overall, I'm okay with it. The... Uh, the desserts though, that we then moved on to. I feel like Rhino at this point, he was just fed up and in a bad mood and well, didn't really care anymore. You're skipping the part about where we were there for a million years before we even were approached oh, yeah, about I dessert. About that. We basically watched the entire sunset before our server returned to our table to see if we needed our drinks refilled or if we were interested in dessert. Or even if we weren't interested in dessert and wanted our check, it was like we totally dropped off his radar. Yeah, there was, thinking back on it, there was probably a solid. It was a ridiculous I would say of time. about 35 minutes yeah, it from was, the time we finished. Because I told Kylie that. It was at least 20 minutes when I started counting, but that was after noticing that we'd been waiting yeah. a long time. Right. Our plates were dirty, empty, yeah. and sitting on the edge of the table ready to be picked and up. And no one came by. No. <laughs> uh, and I. I definitely. I told Kylie I was going to be home at six, and she texted me at six oh five asking where I was. And then I think it was about ten minutes after that that he finally came and asked us if we wanted dessert. Uh, we did it. We each ordered. On the des- the dessert menu was very light. There was basically three main desserts, and then uh, then there was an option samplers. of the yeah of but the assorted. He didn't yeah. even tell us where the dessert menu was. We found it because I looked through the drink menu. Yeah, like he didn't say anything to us when he took the plates. He just left. Yeah, for oh, a long time. If we haven't stated it clearly enough, he was pretty much the worst. Um, and he wasn't new. There was, there's no, there was no, like he was so casual that I'm like, you've clearly been here for a while. I honestly am yeah. not sure what happened with this guy. It was kind of, it was almost out of a movie how bad it was. I, I assumed he was just out back smoking, and every like two seconds, every time he dropped off a plate somewhere, he went in out of smoke break or something. I, like I didn't that. see him anywhere in the restaurant. Yeah, it, he wasn't nowhere. even like he was hovering around somewhere. He was just MIA all the time. Uh, we, we trudged through, though. We did a little research, and we found where the desserts were. They're in the drink menu that's on the table uh, for anyone who's planning on going here. The resourceful folk that we are. Um, Rhino, let's talk about your dessert. Uh, here it is. It's uh, peanut butter and Oreo ice cream. The desserts were very few and uh, none, not too many, which seemed to be 
nothing it, it seemed very uncreative there was no there was no like cool there was nothing signature there was no like here i am there's that dessert you know like when we went to the nbc um uh brew when they serve you an entire banana yeah. tree yeah. on a plate and, and there that's their thing like they have a thing everybody's got a thing and it just didn't seem like there was a thing here so i i got this because I, I love peanut butter and so the rest i don't really like chocolate that much um especially dark chocolate and the rest of the stuff was like dark chocolate oriented so i was like well peanut butter wins and um this was although the presentation was cute in the martini glass um with i don't know weird chocolate circles um it was it was all right there's barely any ice cream in there i barely tasted the peanut butter i guess you can kind of see it in the picture so it kind of sucked yeah, you related it to friendlies, but I kind of told you that I thought that was insulting because I enjoy friendlies and ice you know cream what? dishes. I meditated on it a little too, and and I agree with you. Like a friendlies ice cream dish is good because they get the, you get the little eyeballs and the with the Reese's pieces. There and there's actually ice cream in that dish. This was this was terrible. This was a waste of my like calories. That's I, it was just a waste. And it was five, I believe five twenty nine. Like the rest of the desserts were. Yeah, uh, I had the chocolate gooey banana cake. Um, which I I personally thought that that was the best dessert that we had on the table. It was uh, I think so too. It was kind of like uh, almost like a flourless chocolate cake, very dense, very thick, very heavy, with uh, bananas all over the plate and caramel, a little bit of peanut butter, some some ice cream on top, and then a candied banana sticking up out of it. That's if we had 3D, then that would be so much more <laughs> impressive right now. Um, very Muppets. overall, yeah, I jl's complaint of it was well it wasn't really a complaint it's just a matter of taste your dessert was very dense and very heavy and very rich the cake was very dense and the chocolate was very rich the caramel was very sweet this was a heavy dessert it was a good dessert but a heavy dessert and while sometimes i really am in the mood for a heavy dessert in general i lean more towards the lighter type of dessert yeah i see this dessert just appealed to me i'm a banana fan <laughs> said it before I'll gay say trap. It again. um <laughs> first I, gay I trap of the year thing this was bananas to me it was kind of the the perfect end to the meal but that that's just my opinion on it's, that it's very it's it, i i tried it in the it's very like when i again when i say i don't really like chocolate that much the chocolate in this cake it's very like dark chocolate it's very mm-hmm. very like bitter it's rich. but but i but i i agree the cake itself was very well made um it was good texture good su- consistency uh, you know i i uh i wish it wasn't as dark as it was but you know it works for you and you liked it a lot so yeah, it's all that matters. You ordered it exactly. JL really loved hers. It was her personal favorite. I JL, did. What did you have? Which surprised me. Um, it was the hazelnut raspberry chocolate hazelnut creme chocolate brulee. Chocolate hazelnut creme brulee, and I actually ordered this out of reluctance because you guys had already taken the other two desserts that I thought would be the better ones. Damn right we did. <laughs> um, I am not. I mean, creme brulee is fr- fine, but I'm not like a, one of these people that, you know, sings for creme brulee. Um, but this was really good. Um, the, the chocolate in the creme brulee was a very light, a very light, more type of whipped chocolate, I guess, kind of along the lines of chocolate mousse in a way, but still brulee. And um, it was sprinkled on top with Oreos. You can't go wrong with Oreos. And then it had a cute little raspberry on top, which tasted good um i i thought the portion was appropriate for dessert i like the fact that it was light i didn't walk out the door feeling like my stomach was going to explode from Mm -hmm. too much in it it suited me just fine i liked it better than yours again but that was really more of an i due to the the fact that yours was so rich and heavy and, and mine was was lighter. This one was the winner for me. I felt like I won at the table all around that, that evening. But I'm glad that you have that opinion. Yeah. I'm glad. Uh, so let's go with our overalls on this. Um, well, this, this was a tough one. Um, normally, you know, I just say overall, but I feel like we need to break it down into... We've already talked about how great the atmosphere is. I think we would all rate it close pretty high on it i'd probably rate it despite it being a little bit loud i would say the atmosphere of this place is a is a solid nine yeah the theming they've got it 
yeah. they've got it in theming. It works. For sure. It's it's. I think it's the only reason to really keep around the Lost Continent is because it's such a pretty area. Rhino, any thoughts on that? The continent or the restaurant? The, the restaurant and the theming and what would you I mean, rate? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the theming I think yeah. is good. It's oh. like what you said. It's interesting architecture. Uh, it, it's the most. Uh, it's very thorough. I don't if that makes sense. It's very like it, it's not like they just put all this stuff on the outside because it's got these amazing sculptures on the outside that are waterfalls. The outside, it actually would have been nice to do some outside dining. I think there, like you said, it's got a great view of the park. So, so yeah, I, I'd say, I'd say. Uh, I'd say a nine, I guess, too. Okay. Yeah, I'd say. Okay. In, say theming. It's up there. in theming. Yeah, yeah. in and theming. Then, okay, theming. Okay, so then let's go to service. I would say Zero. the service, a two. Yeah. Yeah, no, I can't rate it higher than a two. Now, granted, that we probably... I, I'm assuming we got a bad egg. I'm assuming that not everyone in the restaurant operates on this abysmal level of service. But it just... That... I... I'm almost at, well, I am. I'm sitting here struggling for words. I'm at a loss for how we were dropped. To the extent that we were dropped, it was it was jaw-dropping. Yeah. No, Especially was, since we were ordering awful. so much food. Yeah. we it, Like, we're spending money. His tip goes up. Like, come on, man. Yeah. yeah it, it was kind of astounding. I don't really know what happened there. That was so strange. I'd, uh, yeah. I'd say a one. Okay. I, I, I no, one. somewhere in there because, okay. I mean, other, nobody was particularly rude to us. I should say that. It was just bad service, but nobody was rude. Yeah, nobody was rude or unfriendly. In fact, at the hostess stand, when we asked to be moved, that, that was done without hesitation, without trouble. I was not made to feel bad for requesting that. I was accommodated immediately and with a, a smile. It was just our server was missing basically didn't remember what drinks we needed to have uh refilled he tried to give rhino water when rhino had lemonade Lemonade. Mm -hmm. um he Mm -hmm. i wasn't even sitting there and he he tried to do it wasn't engaging at all and sometimes wasn't present at all was the worst um yeah no that the whole reason for me even giving it to was because we did have the interaction with the hostess and we did yes. have the interaction yes. with Siraj, the manager. If he would have, as a server, he was a solid zero. He had no personality at all. Yeah, that is zero that personality. Whereas He had just checked out for the day or something. And I mean, in terms of, we, we talked about it on the NBA City Show. That was our best server that we ever had. I, oh, yeah, John, that guy was he great. Even, he found the review later and commented about it. Oh, did he really? It. Yeah, he said, he said thank you. Oh. For all the kind words. He's working over at um, Animal Kingdom Lodge now. We should go see I can't remember him. what restaurant. I'll have to look it back up and uh, see where he said exactly. But he's working over somewhere at Animal Kingdom now, I believe. Yeah, he's Animal one King of those Lodge. servers you want to follow yeah. around. Um, well, he followed us with his baby after. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but service here, two for me. Food, I would have rated the food here despite the little bit of dryness. I love the two appetizers. I love my dessert. I would have rated the food an eight here. I'm kind of going with the same. Again, not the best meal I ever had, but I still find uh, the fact that the menu is so accommodating for special diets really impressive. And my meal was a good meal as far as special diets go. Um, And I just plain liked my dessert. So, yeah. Rhino. I still think I would have gotten a better meal had I gone to eat in Hogsmeade at the quick service location. So I don't think I can rate it as high as an eight because that, to me would lead people to believe like I'm I'm saying search this out to go eat there and I I don't think I'd say that. So I'm going to I'm going to say like a 6, a high 6. Okay. Bordering yeah, bo- yeah high 6. Yeah, overall not I would, bad, but just yeah. yeah. At the end of the day though, our meal with our annual pass discount, it was $73, which you know, we ordered a lot. Um, two appetizers, two, yeah. three entrees, three, three desserts, desserts, and, and one drink. A one lemonade. Drink. No, no alcoholic drinks were included on this. Um, so we ordered a lot. In general, though, considering our entrees were fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen dollars, that's for a not sit down restaurant at dinner. At dinner, yeah. that's decent. That, it was very decent. So overall, I would probably give my full review of this as a probably a six and a half to a seven because although although the experience was mixed for our group 
I, I would still go back and try this again, maybe for lunch next time. And, and so that way I could stick more on the sandwich menu. I believe the menu is an all day. It's the same thing, no matter when you go, but at lunch, I would probably gravitate towards looking at the bottom at the sandwiches that they mm-hmm. offer and not so much the, the entrees, the heavy portions. Yeah. So that's just me though. Um, I, I don't know how I would rate this. I think, can I, rather than giving it a number, can I just kind of say how I feel about this yeah, restaurant? I guess so. I enjoyed our experience. Do you want some background music? Please. The I don't, I don't have the violin for me, anymore. if that's all right. Um, I really enjoyed our meal there. I will, I will return to, okay, you're distracting me now. We're good. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for that. Um, I will return to Mythos, but <laughs> if I'm <laughs> okay, it's a fire sale. <sighs> oh, sorry, sorry, we're done. We're done. No, you're not. We're done. I'm done. I'm done. All right. I enjoyed the experience. <laughs> I will return there again. Um, but in terms of like, if I'm actually choosing a place to eat on Universal property, go to City Walk. The Brill and Grew. Yep. Yep. Still my go to that. Yeah, that's how I feel. NBC I, is going to be my default. It just the restaurants in City Walk are better, better. than this. They're better I than this. I Vivo, Brill and Grew, mm-hmm. Cowfish still. Yep. Anti Jotes. Anti Jotes. Anti Jotes. Anti Jotes. Anti Jotes. Emeralds. I, mm. I I feel the same way. Like I I I wouldn't not eat here again i will never seek it out to eat here again yeah. but if i was with people and the they're wine. like do you want to go to mythos what yeah. okay yeah i'd be like yeah i guess so. that's I fine i wouldn't i wouldn't be like no don't go there but i also would be like there's better places like if you if you're like us and you go there all the time and you want to try something new and you hadn't been there go there yeah, yeah that's fine completely agree you'll enjoy it yeah maybe <laughs> hopefully so <laughs> unless you're rhino so that's our review um I we were going to end off this show talking about our resolutions. However, I feel like, like a we, 90 minute show. I feel, yeah, it, it, it's going on a little too long here. And plus, I kind of sprung that on JL and Rhino at the last second. So I don't feel like they've thought there's out enough. So we're going to save that for next week and throw that in there. Uh, so thank you guys for having a nice conversation about mythos and going to eat with me. It's really mm-hmm. sad when I have to go alone. And thank you to everyone out there who took the time to actually uh, sit here and listen to us talk about it. So um, if you liked it, hit like on the video. And uh, if you're subscribed on iTunes and you liked it, go ahead and leave us a review. And um, yeah, subscribe to us if you're not. And give us all that feedback. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all those fun places anywhere we do uh, things at. And of course, you'll find links to all that and more on our show notes page page which is at disunplug.com that's where you'll find all the other nine million shows that we're doing now um which are all very good so please check all of those out too if you haven't yet uh i promise you may be let down <laughs> uh, yeah, wow. I'm, joking. I'm joking wow you won't be let down you won't be let down um and yeah so we'll be back with you next week for another episode of the dis unplugged universal edition uh but remember oh um uh, bananas are universal. Bananas are universal. Yeah, they are. Banana? <laughs> <laughs>